introducing the delta hot index based on the hot crazy matrix i have been called upon to evaluate this chart from before my time the universal hot crazy matrix is a visualization of how men evaluate women as partners by plotting their hotness against their mental instability the original creator has decided that there are no women below a four in craziness which may be true but is not statistically useful and this divides the chart into six zones the date zone the fun zone the wife zone the danger zone the no-go zone and finally the unicorn zone where we place all the women who are above an eight in hotness and below a five crazy rare indeed i have some major disagreements with the crazy hot matrix which i have replotted into the delta hot index pause to read if you want to really confuse yourself before i explain it first of all here's what i like about the hot crazy matrix number one it's directionally accurate men will date crazy as long as she's hot Number two, it recognizes the three main boxes that men assign women into. Wife, date, fun is essentially keeper, sleeper, sweeper. Number three, it's a good reminder not to date crazy. This visual is more or less what that is like, as long as you also assume that the cops will be on her side. Overall, the hot crazy matrix is a lot better than nothing. My disagreements are as follows. First of all, the matrix evaluates women on a numerical scale of crazy and hot, and I obviously don't have a problem with this, but that does mean it cannot be universalized. Not every man is going to get the same result. For example, if you're a male three and you're dating a female seven who is a five crazy, she's not going to be in your fun zone. She's going to be unmanageable. Additionally, the placement of the zones is just ridiculous. The no-go zone suggests that no men ever go for women who are below a five hot, which is not true, and that no men ever date or marry a woman who is below an eight hot, which is also not true. Now, you could get over this by saying that these numbers are subjective. She's an eight to me, but then you'd have to say she's an eight crazy to me, and that doesn't make sense. The Delta Hot Index solves this problem by making everything relative. She's either the most crazy possible or the least, and she's a lot more attractive than you or a lot less. I have plotted the zones from zones onto these zones, and I have also made a stupidity index for how women evaluate men. These dynamics are, of course, backed by research. Sometimes I do a lot of reading to make my content, and I need all the help I can get. If you want help understanding more things faster, you should try Shortform, the sponsor of this video. We live in the information age, which is a misnomer. It can be very difficult to find real information. Shortform helps you pick out the good stuff and get it basically in your face. Shortform is an easier way to learn. Shortform makes the world's best guides to nonfiction books with easy to read summaries that feel comprehensive. I feel like I know what I'm getting from the book before I read it. Get Shortform now through the link in the comments and get a free trial plus 20% off an annual subscription. If you've ever been curious about new concepts, wanted to check out a book you've heard of, or just wanted to brush up on a classic, Shortform is for you. That's shortform.com slash homath. Now let's get back to all that information. In studies by Buss and Shackelford, Brown and Moore, and Kirstner, Figueredo, and Jacobs, focusing on mate value differences, they found that lower mate value individuals chronically anticipate infidelity, which leads to behaviors like short-term mate guarding. So in other words, higher mate value individuals are less likely to be chronically concerned over infidelity. This matches with the finding that individuals with a greater mate value are more likely to report an intention to commit an infidelity. This matches with narratives from my work. When there are mate value differences, the less valuable partner is likely to experience anxiety. Here's a first-hand account from a popular video of mine. A relationship truly only works when a woman settles for a man that she considers mid. That would be, of course, mid-women settling for mid-men. I used to talk so much about girls who settled and now i hope to become one she used to reach out of her league and now she is aging so she hopes to grab somebody on the way down because when a woman does the opposite and falls in real love with someone she's attracted to and who's at her level it's a disaster here's where she gets confused attracted to and at her level are not the same thing unless you're up here it's a disaster because you're going out of your league and he doesn't really want you. That's when the power dynamic and balance gets thrown off kilter because the man doesn't hold her on a pedestal. She also added this text. Pause to read my translation. And that makes her feel crazy, delulu, 
out of control. So she's basically talking about her history of trying to lock down men who don't want to be locked down by her. And therein lies the utility of the Delta Hot Index. It tells you when you're starting to get in over your head. So the Hot Crazy Matrix is prescriptive. That means it tells men what they should look for. If she is this hot, she has to be less than this crazy. But the Delta Hot Index is both prescriptive and descriptive. Not only should you aim for a more stable zone, but in reality, as your attractiveness decreases relative to your partner, you become quickly less likely to have a stable relationship or any relationship at all. And as your attractiveness increases relative to your partner, the less you will feel committed to the relationship. It's also important to point out that these attractiveness differences do not cause your partner to be more crazy or stupid, they just cause you to perceive them that way. Basically, if you are chronically concerned over infidelity and your partner is more likely to report an attention to commit an infidelity, you're going to say that person is crazy or stupid or whatever your favorite word is. So the Delta Hot Index tells you what you're likely to find and how you should make a selection. The one flaw of the Delta Hot Index is that it's not drawn to scale. This is not how likely you are to have a Prince Charming relationship. It's just where you need to be for one to be likely. The reason that the unicorn slash your zone is so large and the reason I called it your is because men will often get into relationships where they think they hit the jackpot only to find out later that they were not in the zone they thought they were. Similarly, women will think they met Prince Charming when really they just haven't found the stupid yet. So generally speaking, the higher value your partner is than you, the worse of an idea it is to attempt. Let's go over the zones one by one. We'll start with the male side. So Keeper, Sleeper, Sweeper are all here below the half crazy line. These are extensions of those zones. I agree with the general placement of the danger zone. That's where you're dating somebody who has a very bad, crazy to attractive placement. So if you have a woman who is about as attractive as you and below the half crazy line, most men consider that a keeper. If she gets a little bit less attractive, as you can see, the amount of crazy that's tolerated cuts off pretty fast before entering an inferior zone. Basically, if the man has higher value, but the woman is acting like she has higher value, it's like, whoa, let's slow things down a little. So crazy actually matters a lot. Even if you are dating somebody who is on your level or even a little bit below, if she gets crazy enough, that can drop her down a category. And if she keeps going, she can become a sweeper level, let's not tell people about this kind of choice. Partnerships in this area can have the woman be significantly more attractive than the man, but only as long as he is a little bit and deals with her being very crazy. Happy wife, happy life. Partnerships where the woman is a lot more attractive than the man usually have a whole lot of tolerating going on, unless the man has some kind of invisible value that equalizes the attractiveness. The unicorn zone here, which I also called your f is a lot larger than on the hot crazy matrix. This is again due to the delusion that an average man could have a 7.5 in his fun zone. I believe that the no-go zone on the hot crazy matrix is entirely too large, and I think that men need to admit that they will go significantly less attractive than themselves as long as they stay on their best behavior. You don't want to be in here. The danger zone is basically where you have somebody who is not appropriate to show to your friends and loved ones, but she does not agree. The no-go zone because begins where, no matter how much you are on your best behavior, if you don't have some degree of attractiveness, nothing's gonna happen. At more extreme ratios of hot to crazy, we enter the homeless zone, which speaks for itself. So yeah, these are not exact measures, they're just general guidelines. For example, a man might have a keeper who's over here, but in general I think that this is much more accurate than suggesting that no women below a 5 are getting any attention. That gives me these kind of vibes. Okay, moving on to the female side. In the same way that men will characterize difficult women as crazy, whether they are or not, women will sometimes characterize difficult men as being stupid, whether they are or not. The bad boy, for example, sometimes is very intelligent. Sometimes that's how he got in that position in the first place. But women might see that kind of treatment as being stupid because of the female tendency to assume if I am attached to him, he must be attached to me, which is not always the case. Let's begin with this cute little ghost. This is the not people zone. You'll notice that it's much larger than the homeless zone, but this is again not to scale. Most men are in here for most women. And that is of course because this is how women tend to see men that they do not know. A lot of them are just invisible. 
your mileage may vary. You'll notice that there are two mistake zones, a good guy mistake zone and a bad boy mistake zone. This one is for men who seemed like they were going to be a lot nicer, and this one is for men who seemed a lot cooler at first. That's usually reserved for guys who are faking competence and confidence. The creep zone is on the tail end of this. That's for guys who were always significantly less attractive, but made more of an effort to be nice, which is creepy if you're not attractive. The friend zone goes all the way down to minimum. If you treat a woman the way she wants to be treated, which she would consider the opposite of stupid, she will keep you around in this zone. You will notice that the husband zone skews a lot more unattractive than the keeper zone. Women will often date or marry men who are one or two points below them because they make up for the lack of attractiveness with extra niceness. That dynamic is how we keep civilization going and also why I think we're in trouble right now. To make it into the husband zone, you have to be significantly less stupid than average. If she can't show off your looks, she has to at least be able to show off the way that you treat her. You can also be somewhat stupid in the Prince Charming zone as long as you are more attractive. And in my opinion, if you are spot on at her level and you treat her great, I think you can still make it in there. The bad, mid, and good situationships occupy this little crescent moon shape. The bad one is basically a guy who thinks that he's on her level because they are a looks match, but he just isn't keeping it together. The good one is a guy who is too hot to stop seeing even though he is being pretty stupid. And the mid one is that terrible little space in between the two where you don't know which one is going on. This one should be a lot larger if this was to scale for modern times. The bad boy zone could also be called the I can fix him zone. Similar to the way that men think they found a keeper but really they're in trouble. Women will sometimes date an absolute piece of garbage and just ignore his red flags and end up here in Delulu. Land. And finally, women have a prominent settling zone in the middle of the map that men do not have. This is of course because men would often rather have somebody in this area instead of nobody, whereas women are sort of icked out by guys who are not very much of anything. So there you have it. Mate value differences influence your attitudes towards your partner, with lower mate value individuals anticipating infidelity, and higher mate value individuals less likely to be concerned because they know they can do better. And even though there are cases that violate this principle, for example somebody who is less attractive than you but still totally insane, the Delta Hot Index reminds you where you are and what you should do. Basically, if you find yourself engaging in short-term mate guarding, even though it is effective in the short term, this may be a sign that your partner has a greater mate value than you and is just not that into you. And you should resist the urge to label them as the problem and just try to find something that works better for you.